Hello everyone, my name is Christopher. You can call me Chris. Something happened to me last night. Something unexplainable. I guess I should start from the beginning. I was born and raised in a small village that isn't marked anywhere on any maps. So don't bother asking for the name. You won't find it. Growing up in the village was exhausting, but I was a happy kid. There were some kids my age and we would help our families with livestock and crops and we would play hide and seek in our spare time. We never had internet and I never really saw my parents or anyone from the village go to the town to buy any produce. The village is surrounded by a thick forest that stretched as far as the eye can see. There was nothing remarkable about the village except for one thing. There was a big pond situated on the far left side of the village. Now, the only reason I say it's remarkable is because kids, or even some adults, were never allowed to go near it. As a kid, I never questioned it. I did as my parents said, but as the time moved on, I got more and more curious about the pond. That's why one night when everyone went to their homes to sleep and rest after a hard day of work, me and a group of my friends decided to sneak out and see what's so special about the pond. We all grouped up near the center of the village and headed out to the pond. Why do you think we're not allowed near the pond? You think there are monsters there? One of my friends said shakily and I could tell he regretted sneaking out. I have to admit, the village was pretty scary at night. Everything was silent except for our footsteps and heavy breathing. Monsters don't exist, Billy. They probably just don't want us to get hurt. After all the rains, the pond is probably very deep. I said reassuring him, and myself at the same time. We continued walking and soon after, we were there. The water in the pond glistening under the moonlight like hundreds of fairies dancing. So what do we do now? I said feeling dumb that we hadn't even talked about what we were going to do when we got there. Maybe just sit near the water and talk for a bit under the moonlight. It looks beautiful. Veronica said, and she was right. It was beautiful. Veronica was my crush ever since we were kids. So I jumped at the opportunity to spend more time with her. I agree. We should do just that. I sat and took a seat next to Veronica, who was already sitting down. The rest of our friends joined us and sat there for 10 minutes until we heard a sound coming from behind us. And all of us snapped our heads back in unison. I think we made it clear that Pond is off limits. A large man who stood before us said in an angry tone. It was the village elder, Francis. He grabbed Billy by his collar and threw us on the ground behind him. We're going to make an example out of you. The rest of you can consider yourselves lucky. He said in a tone that sent chills down my spine. I was afraid. I was afraid of what was going to happen to Billy. We all went home and when I got to my house, my dad was standing outside. A big branch in his hands. You dare make our family's name look bad? He yelled as I started to sob. I got beaten by that branch until it snapped in half. My legs, my arms, my back, everything was swelled up. Blue as the night sky we looked at. While I was on the floor, too weak to even sob. On the verge of passing out, my grandfather came in the room. I'm so sorry this happened, Sonny. He said in an apologetic tone. As he pressed a bag of ice on my bruises, he took care of me for the rest of the night always checking if I had a fever and giving me plenty of water to keep me hydrated. My grandfather was a good man. He was strict but always caring, and he never resorted to violence if he didn't have to. A polar opposite of my dad, who I assume felt enjoyment by beating me half to death, judging by the huge grin on his face while doing it. Next day I was too weak to even work, so I was in my room most of the day, only getting up to eat, drink, and go to the bathroom. As I was ready to take my third nap of the day, I heard something coming from outside. It was a voice, but it was hard to hear, so I opened my window to hear better. 
So I call everyone over the age of 20 to come and witness what happens when you refuse to follow the rules that we followed for centuries before. I heard Francis say as my mind connected the pieces together. Oh no. What was going to happen to Billy? I said in a weak whisper as I tried to get up. I got up as every bone and every part of my body hurt from the relentless beating I took the night before. As I got to the door and tried to open it, I realized it was locked. Everything was locked. No, 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 come on! I yelled as I tried to open the door. It was of no use. I wasn't getting out until someone unlocked it. I laid back in my room, but this time I couldn't sleep. The thought of Billy getting a beating, or even worse, kept me up. I waited like that for what seemed like ages until I heard footsteps and crying outside. When I looked out, I saw a couple of people helping Billy's parents to their home as they cried. Where is Billy? I thought to myself as I heard another set of footsteps approaching. It was my parents and grandfather. My parents looked like nothing had happened, but I could see something was wrong on my grandfather's face. As they got in, my mom started making dinner as my father fidgeted around with one of his mini tools. My grandfather, however, came straight to my room. I looked at his eyes, which looked filled with sadness and sorrow. Grandpa, what happened? Where is Billy? I asked my questions frantically, desperately needing an answer. Grandpa looked at me and sighed as a couple of tears made their way down to his chin. Billy is... gone, Sonny. I'm so sorry. He said as another set of tears rushed down his face. What do you mean gone? They killed Billy? I yelled as he shushed me. I'm not even supposed to be telling you about this. You're not old enough to know of him yet. He said as I looked at him, sadness and confusion filling my eyes. What do you mean? Who is he? What have they done to Billy? I asked him, hoping for an answer, needing an answer. We are different from other people. We have a curse, a curse that has been here for generations. We need to follow the rules or else we may not be the only ones to be affected by it. He said in a defeated voice filled with sadness, There is a tradition we do every year. I'll bring you with me. Hopefully that gives you answers you seek. He said after a long pause. I should not be doing this, but you deserve answers. You deserve to know what happened to your friend. He said as he turned around to leave my room. He paused and turned around before leaving. I will come to you when the day comes. Be prepared, my child. He said as he turned the knob and left, leaving me in a daze of emotions. Next couple of days I was working as usual, taking frequent breaks for my body to heal. I was still hurt badly. I didn't get much sleep either, thinking of who or what he is gave me nightmares every time I fell asleep. A bit more than a month later and I was in my room relaxing after yet another day of work. My grandfather came in my room. It's time, Sonny. Follow me. He said in a worried tone as I almost jumped up out of bed. I will finally get the answers I desperately needed. It was already nighttime as we left the house, sneaking through the village even though it seemed no one was there. As we neared the pond I could see the whole village standing in a semicircle and saying some words I couldn't understand. As they chanted, something started emerging from the bottom of the pond. It was a huge dark figure, and as it rose to tower over us, a big yellow eye almost the size of its whole face opened up. As we were transfixed on the events, we didn't hear my dad coming up behind us, and he managed to grab me by the neck and throw me behind him. You stupid old man, both of you will pay for this. He yelled as everyone looked at us, including the huge yellow eye. As my dad and grandfather brawled, I saw all of the villagers rushing towards us. Run, run and don't look back. 
my grandfather said as I turned and ran into the woods. Tears flooding my eyes. I ran like that for hours, occasionally seeing a flashlight, a sign that they were still searching for me. Just as I was about to stop from exhaustion, I came across a road and an object with light coming from the front. That I now know is called a car, stopped in front of me and a man put me in the front seat. I passed out and I awoke in a hospital. I talked with the doctors and, after some tests, they called the police station to come pick me up to give my statement. We didn't really talk while I was in the police car, but after we came back, they took me in the interrogation room and two detectives came in. I was sure they wouldn't believe me, but after seeing bruises and tattered clothes, and after not finding me in their database as a citizen, they sent out a patrol to investigate the woods. After I gave my report multiple times, I was free to go, and that's how I ended up here on this website. I asked someone if there was technology to share my story to more people. They said go to the library and to find this website on the computer. So that's where I'm at right now. Writing this, hoping it would make me feel better about the whole situation. I don't know what happened to my grandfather, but... I know that if it wasn't for him, I would have been the next offering to him.